On today's show, Matthew Nyes with some bold statements about his fellow Leafs teammate Austin Matthews. We'll tell you about them and debate where Matthews ranks among the league's two-way phenoms. All that more coming up on today's edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co host, Dave Morasuti. Today's show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL, enter the promo code locked on NHL for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off, we promise you. Man, Dave, uh, we, we got uh, some some news today, somewhat. We got something to talk about today. So let's first and foremost thank Matthew Nines for uh, speaking today at the Rookie Showcase. Um, you've been to that Rookie Showcase before, haven't you? Didn't you cover that a few years ago back in the day? Is that what you covered? There's like some ping pong going on and yeah, I've, taking a I've, bunch of photos. I've been to three Rookie Showcases before, three of them. So what happens there? It's just, you know, it's kind of like a, I feel like it's like an orientation day for the rookies, right? Because a lot of these rookies have never gotten the NHL experience before. So the big one is they get their, their rookie cards, the pictures for their rookie cards done. Uh, so that's kind of the first time that they really, in some cases, put on their full gear. Like they're f- dressed in full, what I don't know. Matt, well, technically, Matt and I's has played for the Leafs, so he's a di- different situation. But usually, these guys haven't played in the NHL yet, so they haven't put on the their stuff. They get uh, a little bit of an orientation. I think uh, Marty Walsh, the new uh, director of the NHLPA, got a chance to speak with them. They do the media roundabouts as well. They do so. They do a little scrimmage as well, just to kind of. Just like a li- nice little like it's like a showcase, right? That's what they could literally call it. So I've been to yeah, I think about three or four of them. I've uh, interviewed many different prospects before, many different teams. Uh, you know, I'll name drop like Jeremy Brock. I remember when he was like the hot thing as a Leafs prospect. I got to interview him. You know, guys like Casey Middlestat, Timothy Lilligren. Uh, I'm trying to think of like. Uh, actually, Ma- Charlie McAvoy, when he was kind of just breaking through, I remember I interviewed him. I got I, I got a whole list. Hughes, I feel like I remember, didn't you interview Quinn Hughes before too? Yep, did both Hughes brothers, Quinn Hughes, yeah. Jack Hughes. I did. Uh, I actually, yeah, I have a story on them. Um, I'll have the link drop it somewhere. Uh, yeah, so I got to talk to the Hughes brothers. The Hughes brothers was a different one because they used to do this event in Toronto, but they moved it to Washington. I still got a chance to speak with these guys over Zoom because I think this was that was like, obviously, they're not going to send me down to Washington. Uh, they were going with a minimal staff there, but I got to talk to these guys over Zoom. So, yeah, for me, actually, this was kind of my introduction into talking with NHL players or soon to be NHL players. It's kind of a cool moment for me as well. I remember covering that first event. I will see the caliber of rookies has also gone up. Since they first started the event, too. Yeah, Bedard was out there doing his thing this weekend. So everyone got to see old Connor Bedard out there, there, you know, putting on a magic show. Um, Matthew Nyes was out there, too, the Maple Leafs' top prospect. And he was making noise at this thing. And like you said, the media contingent's out there, and they're asking questions, and they've got to, you know, talk and, and answer some questions. The problem is sometimes these kids, you know, they get a little overzealous and they start to, you know, throw out some some claims that are, you know, considered bold to some, maybe not to, to Matthew Nyes. But uh, he was viral on Twitter earlier today and it was making the rounds that Matthew Nyes, I believe it was Greg Wyshynski who uh, tweeted this out earlier today, a quote from Matthew Nyes when they were speaking at the Rookie Showcase um, Matthew Nyes asked how good Austin Matthews is. His answer, pretty damn good. 
He's not just the best goal scorer in the NHL, but he plays defense too. He's kind of the best overall player in the NHL in my eyes. Um, so according to Matthew Nice, Austin Matthews, according to Matthew Nice, is the best overall player in the NHL. Quite some praise from the young Leafs rookie. And uh, a lot of people gave him a little bit of flack for that online, that comment there. I'm not surprised. I mean, it is it is a bold statement, right? Because you're talking about everyone you ask, anyone, even some people on the Leafs, you probably, they would probably inch towards Connor McDavid as the best player in the world, right? There was a point in time where the case could be made that Austin Matthews was near that level, especially when he won the Ted Lindsay. There was yeah. an argument to be made, but right now, like after what we saw Connor make Connor McDavid do in the playoffs and you know just these last few years, it's tough to look at anyone else but him as the top player. You know what though? Honestly, I think he was taken out of context a little here. And and this is the problem <laughs> sometimes with print, is you don't have the full context. You just have question and then answer. But you don't know what the question was before it. Was this a follow-up? Was there more to it? Is this all that got grabbed from it? That is sometimes the problem with a lot of these quotes that get put out there is they don't tell the whole story sometimes. The way that I took it though is Matthew Nyes, just because he talked about him playing defense and he says he's the best overall player, in my mind, I feel like he was just talking about Matthews being one of the most dominant two-way players in the game today. Not that he's the best player in the game, but he's the best overall well-rounded player in his eyes. Is that still, you know, the correct take? I don't, probably not. I mean, is he up there, one of the top five, you know, all-around players? I think you can make the case for him to be. Um, but at the end of the day, I think he's just – he's a guy who grew up kind of looking up to Austin Matthews. They're both from the same city in Arizona, you know, and ultimately he plays with the guy. So he's just kind of, you know, talking up his teammate a little bit. Why people took this and ran with it, I do not really know. But if you do look at the breakdown, you look at what Austin Matthews has actually done the last two years, his defensive metrics and stats – are quite impressive. Like, I think he is in, like, now that Patrice Bergeron is gone and no longer in the NHL, there is a space for someone else to take on, you know, that mantra, that role up as the top two-way defensive forward, um, or two-way forward, rather, in the NHL, who excels both on the offensive end and the defensive end. I mean, we've seen Austin Matthews be considered for Selkie. I think he was top 10 in Selkie voting um, the season that he ended up winning the heart uh, this year, he was, you know, in the teens, he got a couple of like fifth place votes. I mm -hmm. think uh, Mara got more love and recognition for his defensive abilities. But when you do look at, you know, all around game, Austin Matthews is up there. It's not that bold of a statement. When you think about, he's not calling him the best player in the world. He's saying that he's a well-rounded and, you know, maybe one of the best overall players, which again, you could make the argument that he definitely at least deserves to be in the conversation. Yeah. I mean, when you look at Austin Matthews as a defensive player, he doesn't play on the penalty kill, right? So he, he doesn't get the chance to shine in those shorthanded situations, kind of like Mitch Marner does. Right. And he's among the top players, as you, like, as you mentioned, right. A lot of those defensive metrics, takeaways and things like that. Like those are things that when, remember when Austin Matthews first came to the league, Mike Babcock made him watch a bunch of videos of Pavel Datsyuk, Henrik Zetterberg. Like, honestly, Kopitar was a player that he kind of talked about as a player he kind of wanted to emulate. Not because Anze, like, because Anze Kopitar is one of those complete players, one of those dominant players who's not the flashiest offensively, but he's just so gifted in his two way game, right? So, with Austin Matthews, you ask anybody, of course, everyone's going to say, He's such a good goal scorer. That's what makes him such a dominant player. I've seen when he puts that effort in defensively, he is among one of the top defensive forwards in the league. He can be when he chooses to be in most cases, right? The faceoffs is a big one for me too in that regard. I got some stats for you, okay? Over the last two years, okay? This was his stat line 
uh, last season, the season that he won the heart and the MVP. And I might add the Ted Lindsay and the Ted Lindsay award, which oh, no, they renamed it. Didn't they, what they, what they call it. What's it called now? The, uh, Oh, Oh no! It is called the Ted Lindsay, right? No, it's, yeah, called, I was gonna say like did they changed. Yeah, it used to be called the Lester B. Pearson. Now it's the Ted Lindsay, right? right. Uh, so I had it right. So uh, the year that he won that, he had sixty goals, right? But also led the NHL in takeaways with ninety-two, and led by a large margin. The next best was Leon Dreisaitl with seventy-four. So he had nearly twenty more takeaways than the next best player in the National Hockey League. So led them in takeaways and led the league in scoring that year. Had 62 blocks, had a face-off percentage of 56%, and also laid a little bit of, you know, lickens from time to time, registered 67 hits while doing so. Last year, we know the goal scoring was down a little bit, only 40 goals, but he was number one in the NHL among all forwards when it comes to block shots. 92 block shots last year, 68 takeaways, and face-off percentage went down a little bit, 52% but had a little bit more aggression last year, ended up with 73 hits overall. And again, he missed some time uh, last year as well. So these aren't even per 60 numbers over an 82 game season. That's with him missing some time, as is the year before 21-22, led the league in takeaways, but he also missed nine or 10 games. So, you know, those are very impressive stats, you know, And, and I know you can look, McDavid, he's got some similar statistics so he can certainly be thrown in there as like the top guy and clearly offensively no one's going to be able to touch mcdavid um but when it comes to an an all-around player i think there's a conversation to be had that matthews is at least up there in that echelon uh in the top you know three to five for all-around players in the nhl and with that dave why don't we take a quick break come back and maybe see where exactly he ranks let's do our top five all-around players in the NHL today. And we'll do that after a quick word from one of today's show sponsors. It's our good friends over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs makes you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. They fit better than regular shorts that are made from a stiff, restricting cotton. And Bird Dogs, they fix the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like a khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. They also use an anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long go to birddogs.com slash locked on leafs or enter promo code locked on leafs at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on nhl rather locked on nhl uh, for a free water bottle at checkout you won't want to take your bird dogs off we Promise you once again that's locked on NHL uh, at birddogs.com for a free water bottle with any purchase. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano, got Dave Morisuti with me. We're just a few weeks away from the start of NHL training camps, and we're uh, just a couple of weeks from getting up and running back to five shows a week. So if you found us recently over the summer and you've been following along to our off-season coverage, we'll be ramping things back up, back to five days a week, Monday through Friday. You can get us, uh, find us wherever you listen to your podcast if you're on the go, or you can find us on YouTube, Locked On Leafs. Uh, we ask that you do please subscribe. We're on our road to 5K. we got a 5K giveaway coming up once we reach that mark. So the quicker you all subscribe, the quicker we'll get to that giveaway we're hoping to get it done uh soon into the season uh but you gotta gotta subscribe so um we were chatting dave about the comments from matthew nice uh, the controversial uh statement you could say bold claims about austin matthews being the best overall player in the league in matthew nice's eyes um so we thought it'd be fun to kind of take a look at some of the players who also deserve to be up in that echelon and maybe we can help Matthew Nyes a little bit and, and see exactly where he should slot into that conversation. Do you want to start from kind of five to one? Do you want to throw some names at the dartboard and then try and, um, you know, figure out where they slot in? How do you want to start this off? 
I think, you know, I think we should start it from the bottom, right? Or, you know what? Let's start from the top because we already know yeah, who the number easier. one player is. Let's start with number one because we know it's Connor McDavid. We know right. that, like, pretty much the best way to answer this question is you're starting your team today. You have your pick of any player right now who are you taking. Everyone's going to take Connor McDavid. That guy, anytime the puck is on his stick, he can make a nothing play look like the most unbelievable goal you have ever seen. Like if you watch highlights right now, I'm, I like I, I crave hockey highlights. People throw up a Connor McDavid reel on Twitter and it's just, you get reminded how ridiculous Connor McDavid is every time you watch him play. Yeah. He's filthy. Just absolutely filthy. It's, it's disgusting how good that guy is. And I can't wait for hockey to get back so we can see him back in full swing. That's for sure. I'm not going to argue it. You know, I, I, I made the argument a couple years ago when, uh, you know, I was trying to get Matthews the support to win the Ted Lindsay. It worked. Uh, he did end up getting voted by the players as the best all around player that year. He was, but if you're talking about the best all around player right now, yeah, I would say it probably is Connor McDavid who, Last year, 64 goals, 82 takeaways, 89 hits, had 40 blocks, and uh, a uh, a winning faceoff percentage. So still pretty good. I was actually looking. He had a career-high 111 takeaways one year back in 17-18. So, look, McDavid, he, he's, he's the, the goal-scoring god right now, 64 goals. First time we'd seen that in a long time. And, uh, yeah, the defensive game is also there for this guy. So, uh, I would say McDavid rightfully picks up number one, and he's so good offensively that honestly, it, it, he may not be the best defensive forward, but he's sure as hell is good enough to still, you know, have that number one overall player because his offense is so good. I think the conversation really starts here where Matthews could start to creep in at number two, but is there somebody else maybe who you think is a little bit more deserving than Austin Matthews in terms of being an all around player? in the National Hockey League who who you would put ahead of Matthews here, or is this kind of where you'd slot him? I, I slot Austin Matthews second. I understand, and I know a lot of people always kind of put Leon Dreisaitl there. I would pick Austin Matthews over Leon Dreisaitl, and some might call that a homer pick on my part. Go right ahead. But, you know, this is a guy who scored 60 goals. I see the work he does at both ends of the ice. Like, I don't see Leon Dreisaitl playing center like Austin Matthews plays center. And to me, that position, how Matthews plays that position too, just makes him a better all-around player. Yeah. And if you're asking me if you're, you know, to pick a guy who's going to score, you know, to be a top goal scorer, I'm going to pick Austin Matthews. I think he has, yeah, Leon Dreisel scores an incredible rate, especially in the playoffs. I mean, that's probably where people are going to make the argument. He also plays with the best player in the world in the playoffs and they feed off each other in a lot of ways, in my opinion. So I still would go with Austin Matthews. It's close. Like I'm not saying Austin Matthews is far and away. Like they're, you know, he's so far away from the Andre. So I just think he's better. I'm going to throw a name out at you and you let me know if you think that uh, he's deserving to be in this conversation. It, it's, it's slightly controversial. I would say, um, Kale McCarr. Does Kale McCarr deserve to be a conversation at the number two position as one of the best all-around players? Because there were com com comparables last year to him doing things that only Bobby Orr had ever done. And that was with the offensive numbers that he was putting up. He's also one of the best defensemen in the NHL as well. Right? People just, you know, I don't think people understand how good he is defensively because his offense gets talked about so much. It's very similar to Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews here in Toronto. I don't know if their defensive game gets enough respect. Certainly, um, Marner, I think he finally got some respect this year. Obviously, finished top three in uh, Selkie voting. But I think Kale McCarr is a guy who, in my opinion, does kind of deserve to be in the mix here, who is an elite defenseman and an elite offensive contributor. I think there's a conversation to be had where he could slide in here at number two. Uh, with Matthews going to number three, but it could be a coin flip, I suppose, between the two. I had I had Kale McCarr third on my list, and 
there is definitely a case to be made for him to be second. If you watched what Kale McCarr did against Conor McDavid in the playoffs two years ago, years. stop them. Stop. Like it, he met his match speed yeah. wise. He had met his match and it was like, okay. Let's and not see just speed wise, but he didn't allow it to take away from his uh, the other parts of his game. Right. Right. Like the Oilers had no chance in that series against Colorado because basically they said, we're going to put Kill McCarr on Connor McDavid and lo and behold, <laughs> you're not going to, he's not going to win those, that matchup. I think I was reading an article back when like, the playoffs were happening and I, I I'm going to actually, I have it right here. Cause I, you, when you brought that up, I was bringing it up. I think this will kind of help kill McCarr's uh, situation a little bit more. So the first two games that McCarr and McDavid played each other uh, five on five. It was a no contest. Uh, yeah. It was a two, one goal advantage, but Colorado controlled play when Kale McCarr went up against Connor McDavid at five on five. 44 to 27 shot attempts, 2.3 expected goals versus 1.2 for the Oilers, 26 14 scoring chance advantage. Like, there, Kale, it was clear that Kale McCarr was getting the better of that matchup, which you don't see in this situation because usually when you have a shutdown defenseman going up against an elite forward, you don't talk too much about the reversal of the shot attempts. You're kind of just keeping that player at bay. Maybe the shot attempts are up there, but Kale McCarr just does it in so many different ways. So I have him as third, but I yes, an argument can definitely be made for him to be second, especially because of the position he plays and how ridiculous he is when you watch him play. Like I'm so jealous when I watch him play on Colorado because like like that's a, a, a defenseman that any team will take hands down oh. any day. Oh yeah, he's just. Uh... A generational defenseman. Hopefully, he can stay healthy all season. Because man, is he ever fun to watch out there? If only Toronto could find themselves uh, a Kale McCarr. Um, I mean, we we already talked about Leon Drysaddle, I suppose, and you have him under Matthews, which means I guess you have him under McCarr. So he kind of is your guy who's coming in at number four. So is that to you kind of the floor for Matthews? Then, like, is he? I think it to you is it a no-brainer? He's a top three all-around player. Like, where does Sidney Crosby fit into this conversation? Is he still there for you, or has he fallen off with uh, with age here? Nate McKinnon, where's Nate McKinnon in this conversation? Also? Crosby is just outside for me because I have Andre Vasilevsky in my top five. I don't think people understand. We're not talking about top five players. We're talking about top five all around. What do you mean? Andre Vasilevsky never scored a goal in his career. What are you talking about? Okay, if we're going to talk about all time, like all just without goaltenders in this case. We're talking about top five two-way players. I I would say Sidney Crosby's definitely up there too. Even though everyone thinks he's taking a step back. I don't know. You watch him play against some of these top competition. He still makes guys look absolutely ridiculous. Like, I think Crosby does it. Like, it's so if I'm going to give my list, it's uh, McDavid, Matthews, McCarr, Dreisaitl. I probably go McKinnon, then Crosby. Like, Crosby and McKinnon are pretty close to me. I know McKinnon has the speed. He's a bit of a, he's a better offensive player. But Sidney Crosby just has that competitive advantage so when you, when you go against him. Like, yeah, I think if you're if you're talking like a few years ago, I would probably have Sidney Crosby a little bit higher. I'd have him probably above McKinnon, but I mean McKinnon is just such a dominant player. Like he he's he's kind of the one that kind of started the whole, you know, when you ha- when he, that puck's on his stick, he just goes fu- he just goes full speed, and there's just no stopping him. Yeah, like he can just turn a switch anytime he wants. So, like McKinnon and Crosby are kind of neck and neck for me. Yeah, and, and the, the other player who I think is on the outside looking in here, just but when you're talking about like all around talents, you know, I think Sasha Barkov is a guy who you could throw in there who is maybe like the next Patrice Bergeron. I don't know if he's ever going to have the goals. Well, he could actually. He When he gets going, when he gets hot, he can score. Um, but I think maybe Barkov is a guy you could throw in as like an all around talent. Um, arguably now at this point could be considered a top three defensive center 
in the NHL. I think Kopitar is bright kind of there, but also somewhat maybe on the downturn Mm -hmm. um, just based on age. And that's just going to happen when you're, you know, into your mid thirties. Nico Heischer is a young player who's up and coming as a very talented defensive shutdown type of player, two way type of guy. What's that? Jack Hughes, right? Well, he's, Jack he's, Hughes, but like Jack Hughes, I don't think is is he's not he sure in terms of his two way no, ability. Not his two way, but, but he's improved. That's not, but 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 I, for this conversation, I yeah. want to talk about two way ability, not necessarily who's like yeah. the best and what I want to talk about two way ability specifically, right? Like that's yeah. when you're talking about an all around player, you're kind of just talking about okay, yeah. two way play, right? If you go back to the comment from Nice, he's talking about best goal scorer, but also a guy who plays defense. So that, that's where we were going with this conversation. And right. Nico Heischer, he was an 80-point guy last year. 80 points, and he was up there um, and the finalist for the Selkie Award. Right. I remember I was having a conversation with Ken Danico, former New Jersey Devil. He's an analyst with the Devils now. And he was calling this guy Baby Bergeron. Baby Bergeron earlier this year. And he went, that was back in, like, November. Remember when the team got off to an amazing hot start, uh, the Devils and the Leafs snapped their streak? Go Leafs. Um, we had him on before one of the, the the game that they snapped the streak. And one of the big reasons why they got off to a hot start was because he sure, A, healthy, B, was playing out of his mind offensively and defensively. And he was saying this guy's like a baby Bergeron at like 25 years old. So, you know, this is a guy who, I think mean, 24 maybe even, like he's still so young. Yeah. Um, this is a guy who I still believe – um, you know, has another level he could take his game to, former number one overall pick. And last year he took a big jump. I think he can continue to take leaps and jumps. So he's someone who I think can fit into the conversation here. Another really sneaky two-way guy. I'm curious, who, who's who's another sneaky up-and-coming player that that we've neglected to, to talk about so far? Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to say up-and-coming player? Uh, like, you know, under 25, right? Like someone who isn't established and, and, and could, could he still has another level that he could get to, but it started, but it's a sneaky two way guy. Elias Patterson is a sneaky. I, I was just about player. to say Elias Patterson because didn't, wasn't he like top 10 in selfie voting? Yeah. And he had a hundred over a hundred points. Yeah. Right. So he's, he's gone. Kills, like, penalties. And, Kills penalties in Vancouver. Like, yeah, he's gonna get better too with Rick Tockett there as coach, right? He's gonna yeah. make him play a more responsible, responsible game. Like there was a time where Mark Stone was in that conversation too, right? As for sure, two way, sure. legitimate, like shutdown guy. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that if we start getting to wingers, if we're putting wingers into this yeah. conversation, which we shouldn't neglect them, no, you know, Mitch Bard is pretty high up there when it comes to like being a two way winger. I mean, he could also be like top three. He could be, dude, he could be the best two way winger in the NHL. Like, there's not many guys who, you know, are 100 point players and uh, also top three in Selkie voting. You know what I mean? Not a lot of wingers, at least, that can do that. So, you know, yeah, he, could be, he could be up there. I can't remember the last time a winger won the Selkie trophy, too. Did Mark Stone win uh, win the Selkie once upon a time? I don't think so. I mean, I always called it the um, I always called it the Bergeron Award because I feel like that <laughs> that trophy should be named after him. I'm gonna just do a quick look here. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, yeah. No, I'm not seeing any wingers like Chris Draper. Would he be considered a winger? I don't even no. remember what position he played. No, I think he played center. I believe. You letting him? Yeah, Yuri Lettinen, I think, was a winger. So that would have been 2003. Yeah. Because it has just been centers. You have Datsu, Brindamore, Ryan Kessler, Taves, Bergeron, Kopitar, O'Reilly, Couturier. Like, this is predominantly a award that is dominated by centers. Dude, so since, actually- since you and I were born, right? We were both born in 1994. Since you yeah. and I were born, no winger... Uh, no winger not named Yuri Letnin has won this award. <laughs> Yuri Letnin won it three times in the 90s and early 2000s, but no other winger has ever won it since 1991. Dirk Graham 
won the Selkie winger for the Chicago Blackhawks. And then Bob Gainey won a, a bunch in the 70s. But realistically, since the 90s, yeah, this has been a center-dominated award. The Selkie is. Which I think it has an opportunity to change, right? Like, it's just, it's been... I don't know. I think the game is a little different now. And with guys like, you know, Marner, guys like Mark Stone, and, and you know, you've got some other guys out there who are going to have opportunities to fill in as, as wingers who can be two-way guys. Like, I think that at some point here we will see, you know, one of these guys uh, win themselves a, a Selkie as, as a winger in the NHL. We'll see. But uh, we have gone off a, a little bit off topic on that one there. But I think when it comes to, I guess, Austin Matthews, I think we can firmly say that if we're talking about best all-around players, I think you could easily make an argument that he's top three. Top three with maybe a a floor of top five if you really want to. If you have him below the top top five, I I would love to hear your estimation. You are a hater. A hater as... uh, the ball yeah. father used to say. What I would say is if you put Austin Matthews below a top five, I'd like to hear your rationale behind it, one. Mm-hmm. And two, how much of that is because he's with the Leafs <laughs> as well, right? Yeah, if you, yes, if Austin true. Matthews was in another team, I think some people would feel a lot differently about Austin Matthews because there's so much Leaf hate out there. The last two years, he's combined for 100 goals. He had 92 blocks this year leading the NHL. He had 92 takeaways last year leading uh, the NHL. Or first among Fords for blocks. Um, but last year, led the whole league in takeaways with 92 as well. And that's, you know, with a, a 54-ish percent face-off percentage, I suppose, over the last two years. So, I mean, this guy is, is you know, it's a good – he's a great two-way player. Terrific two-way player. Mm-hmm. That's why he won the MVP last year. That's why he won the Ted Lindsay. And I think he'll get back to that this season. Hopefully he gets back to that because, you know, the, the least the least paid him more money than anyone else in the NHL. Go and earn it, pal. Go and earn it. You know what I mean? Go prove that. Go prove your teammate right. Now, people were clowning on him and dunking on him a little bit on social media today, calling him a homer. And how dare he make such a stupid bull claim like that? Hey, it's possible that he could come out looking like a genius if Austin Matthews has uh, the season that he's capable of. Maybe it just replicates the year he had, uh, you know, the season prior. You know, I don't think anybody would be able to say, no, that's not possible. He can't be the best all around player. I think it is. And uh, we'll see if he can get it done this year. All right, buddy. Good stuff. Fun, uh, fun show, fun debate. Uh, I, I think that this year it is going to be interesting without Bergeron. There's actually going to be a little bit of anticipation in the Selkie voting this year. So should be fun to monitor that throughout the season as well, which gets underway pretty shortly, pal. We got a couple more weeks till we get to training camp. And then before you know it, you're going to blink. We'll be all stuffed up with turkey on Thanksgiving weekend. And just a couple of days afterward, we got puck drop for the regular season so lots of stuff to uh to get to before that point here on the locked on these podcasts so again please make sure that you do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast at you can listen to us on the go uh audio form wherever you get your podcast itunes spotify the whole nine yards also we are available on video format up on uh youtube as well just search up locked on leads hit the little notification bell as well Leave a comment down below your thoughts on the conversation. Where is Austin Matthews ranked in terms of being the best overall two-way type of forward? Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section down below. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. You can follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Follow the show as well at Locked on Leafs. We'll be back with another, another episode for y'all on Friday. It'll be Fan Friday, and we have to get someone, Dave. We missed out last week. We will certainly get to somebody. I did have someone reach out to me who I think would be a good candidate. But uh, just in case, why don't you keep reaching out to us? Hit us up on Facebook or on uh, Twitter or Instagram, and uh, you know maybe you can get in line, and we could use you as an alternate, perhaps if something falls through, or you know put you in line for uh, for next week, maybe. 
So that's coming up on Friday. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.